Item number SCP-2317 See addendum Regarding SCP-231-1-6 through Object Class Keta Sight and Personnel Requirements Under special order of O5 Beep, the following addendum is attached to the beginning of the file for SCP-231-7. All personnel assigned to SCP-231-7 must rotate out for one month of psychological counseling after two months on site. SCP-231-7 is to be kept at an undisclosed location. All personnel assigned to SCP-231 will be transported there blindfolded from Site-19 by route including no fewer than seven different forms of transportation, including but not limited to aircraft, automobile, underground tunnel, and beep. Removal of the blindfold during the transport process is grounds for immediate termination. Personnel assigned to SCP-231-7 must undergo heavy psychological testing before being cleared to enter the site. Individuals must score at least 72 points on the Melgram Obedience Examination, be unmarried, have no offspring, and express nothing less than total loyalty to the Foundation. Normal psychological screening procedures against access to disorders are weaved, so long as the D-Class personnel in question has the mental capacity to carry out Procedure 110 Montauk as needed. Personnel who express sympathy towards SCP-2317's plight and or express a desire to rescue or sympathize towards SCP-2317 will be transferred to another project without delay. Any actual rescue attempts will be met with immediate termination. Personnel who have served on the staff of SCP-2317's containment team are not required to divulge that information to others. No official record shall be kept of the names of any staff assigned to SCP-2317, nor will said service appear in the personnel files of said staff. While on site, individuals assigned to SCP-2317 will be issued concealing helmets with integrated voice changes to protect their identity. On-site staff are not to remove said uniforms in the presence of other staff members. Off-duty hours are to be spent in private quarters alone. Six D-Class personnel are to be assigned to SCP-2317 each month for the purpose of carrying out Procedure 110 Montauk. Violent criminals are not to be used for this purpose due to the possibility of accidental fatality during the 110 Montauk process. Special Containment Procedures Following repeated escape and suicide attempts and based on the failure of containment for SCP-231-1-6, containment of SCP-231-7 has been amended to the following. SCP-231 is to be contained within a soundproof holding cell adjacent to holding cells for six Class D personnel assigned for the purposes of Procedure 110 Montauk. Cameras will monitor every inch of the cell at all times and must be manned 24 hours a day. Malfunctioning monitoring equipment will be replaced without delay by psychologically screened staff. Doors will be magnetically locked, open door only by positive action by the control and monitoring facility. This includes all doors linking the main holding cell to those of the 6D class personnel. SCP-2317 is to be kept restrained to a hospital bed at all times, except for the purposes of Procedure 110 Montauk. Hydration will be provided through IV drop. Feeding will be carried out twice per day through feeding tube by approved medical personnel who have not taken the Hippocratic Oath. Under no circumstances are narcotics, anesthesia, or other unapproved medications to be administered to SCP-2317. Procedure 110 Montauk is to be carried out at least 
once every 24 hours by D-class personnel. During Procedure 110 Montauk, at least one security clearance for a staff member must monitor the procedure by camera at all times, although the sound may be turned off if the vocalizations of SCP-2317 become too distressing. Following the procedure, all D-class personnel must return to their holding cells or explosive colors will be detonated. Data expunge per order of 05 beep on beep. Information moved to eyes only document 231110 Montauk. Access to 231110 Montauk is limited to personnel with security clearance 4. Description. SCP-2317 is a beep female between beep and beep years of age with data expunged. SCP-231-1-7 were retrieved from Beep following a police raid on a warehouse owned by an organization called the Children of the Scarlet King. See article on Beep in the Beep newspaper, Police Raid Satanic Sex Cult, Save 7. 24 hours after the rescue, SCP-2311, real name Beep, went into labor pains, giving birth three minutes later to SCP Beep, causing a Beep event resulting in over Beep confirmed casualties. Foundation personnel immediately took possession of remaining SCP-231-2-7 and based on notebooks recovered from the cult, instituted Procedure 110 Montauk to prevent future occurrences. Addendum 231A. Current status of SCP-231 units. 1. Deceased. Killed during initial recovery operations while giving birth to SCP Beep. See Casualty Report for Event 231 Alpha for more details. 2. Deceased. Killed during attempt to remove fetus of second SCP Beep specimen resulting in immediate beep event. See casualty report for event 231 Bravo for more details. 3. Deceased. Self-terminated following a prolonged period of distress caused by implementation of procedure 110 Montauk. SCP beep immediately underwent a beep event. See casualty report for event 231 Charlie for more details. 4. Deceased. Attempted to administer SCP-500. Although successful in that all traces of SCP beep were expelled from the system, expelled remains immediately underwent a beep event, causing numerous casualties including for herself. See casualty report for event 231 Delta for more details. 5. Deceased. Botch application of Procedure 110 Montauk resulted in 5 giving birth to SCP Beep one hour later, which then underwent a beep event. See casualty report for event 231 Echo and report on destruction of Site 231 Aleph for more details. Recruitment profile for D-Class personnel was revised to minimize possibility of a second botched Procedure 110 Montauk. 6. Deceased. Killed during escape attempt aided and abetted by Agent Beep, who had been exhibiting heightened stress levels due to prolonged exposure to SCP-231. Obtained possession of SCP redacted and attempted to use said weapon to rescue 6 and 7. Agent Beep was killed in a resulting firefight but a stray round resulted in the termination of Six as well. Phases of Six's SCP he beep then underwent a beep event. In the wake of this incident, O5 level personnel voted by unanimous decision to amend personnel policies. See casualty report for event 231 Foxtrot for more details. 7. As of beep, 7 is successfully contained at site beep. Addendum 231B Text of missive by 05 beep Dear friends, 
and has come to my attention that recently certain rumors have surfaced regarding SCP-231. Due to the drop in staff morale, I have decided to address some of the more prevalent points. Yes, Procedure 110 Montauk is as horrible as you have heard, which is why only D-Class personnel are authorized to carry it out. Yes, it does involve brutal redacted. No, assignment to SCP-231 is not intended to test your loyalty to the Foundation, your tendencies towards beep or anything else. No, SCP-231 is not a punishment detail. Yes, there are staff members who have been on SCP-231 and have successfully transferred out by their own request. No, not everyone who's worked on SCP-231 is terminated upon leaving the project. Yes, staff members who have been assigned to SCP-231 are allowed to take a Class A amnestic before leaving the project, if so desired. Yes, false memories are then implanted. No, none of the supposed methods for recovering or detecting false memories work. Yes, there are some of you who worked on SCP-231 and don't remember it. No, we have not given up trying to save SCP-2317, but research in that field must be carried out with the utmost of caution, based on the increased potency of each subsequent beep event associated with each subsequent SCP beep specimen. There is a strong possibility that SCP-2317's beep event could result in an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. This information is corroborated in notebooks recovered from the cultists. See document Seven Brides, Seven Seals, SCP-231, Agent B. No, putting the poor girl out of her misery is not an option. Neither is drugging her. She has to be aware of what is going on for 110 Montauk to work. One final note. The Foundation does many distasteful things in the completion of our mission. But our mission is important enough that the price is one we must pay. Containment of SCP-231 is one of our most dangerous duties. Not because of any direct danger to ourselves, like SCP-682 but because of the danger that our resolve will fail, that we will allow ourselves to either let down our guard due to the sympathy for the suffering of an innocent, or that we will allow ourselves to become monsters through the performance of monstrous acts. Just do your jobs and save the philosophizing for the shrink. Sincerely, O5 Beep. Addendum 231C Update 231-7's emotional response to Procedure 110 Montauk appears to be reduced recently. Despite proper execution of said procedure, increasing danger of SCP beep undergoing a beep event. Two events have been proposed. 1. Development of a new containment procedure with higher emotional response than Procedure 110 Montauk. 2. Administration of a Class C amnestic to SCP-2317, allowing for return to base emotional response state. Said memory modification is to be administered during execution of Procedure 110 Montauk to maintain heightened emotional state following memory reset. Please advise. Dr. Beep. Addendum 231D Decision Carry out option 2 at the first available opportunity, O5 Beep. Addendum 231E, Aftermath. Option 2 was carried out. SCP-2317's emotional state returned to 100% efficacy. Dr. Beep subsequently committed suicide due to heightened emotional stress. We'll continue analysis of efficacy of treatment. Dr. Beep. Addendum 231F. Continued analysis of efficacy of treatment. After some analysis, I have determined that it is not necessary to perform memory modification every time Procedure 110 Montauk is carried out. In fact, it is better to delay for some time before re-administering the agent. 
Analysis of SCP-231-7 in Motron's response indicates that efficacy of Procedure 110 Montauk seems to peak between the third and fourth performance of the procedure. The dread of anticipation of events seems to have heightened in Motron's response for a time. Before familiarity with the procedure begins to lessen the efficacy of the treatment, my recommendation is that Class A amnestics be administered once a week during Procedure 110 Montauk. The calendar has been modified accordingly. Dr. Beep. Item number SCP-5832 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures A Foundation Front Company has purchased a building containing SCP-5832 and falsely classified it as condemned to discourage trespassing. A single guard is to be stationed on location to ensure security. The entrance to SCP-5832 is to be monitored via remote surveillance. Description SCP-5832 is an apartment consisting of a hallway with two opposing rooms at its end. Those who enter the area are entirely unable to vocalize. Other deliberately generated forms of noise, like clapping or playing an instrument, are possible, and other sounds are not affected. Evidence suggests that the anomaly was at one time inhabited, though the apartment seems not to have been entered for at least two years. A small metal placard under the apartment number reads, Department of Abnormalities. The leftmost room appears to be a child's bedroom, painted pink. The paint has no anomalous properties, but contains dangerous amounts of lead and has peeled heavily. The contents of the leftmost room are listed below a 16-pack of Crayola crayons, and a Disney Princess activity book. All images of Prince Adam from Beauty and the Beast have been colored over and scratched out in red. The red crayon has not otherwise been used. A Webcam plush black Labrador retriever. In several places, fur is crusted over with an unidentified substance. A Nintendo DS and a cartridge for Animal Crossing Wild World. The game was functional in all aspects, save that when an NPC was engaged in conversation, no dialogue would appear in the resulting bubble. The player character's personal commentary on achievements or actions was also missing. Other text was not affected, based on the presence of certain time-locked features in the game. It had been played continuously for at least nine months. A white wooden dresser. Contents of the dresser include a charm bracelet with one attached charm resembling a birthday cake with seven candles. Also found inside were several opened and partly emptied packages of pull-ups, disposable training pads, and three identical Disney Princess t-shirts and a child's medium size. All three shirts are heavily stained. The rightmost room is a small bathroom of linoleum flooring. It contains a pink toothbrush and a tube of Crest Children's toothpaste, as well as a plastic booster stool under the toilet seat. No toilet paper or other hygiene products are present. There is a large crack in the bathroom ceiling. The sink and the bathtub faucet are functional and non-anomalous. Water samples taken from the toilet reveal trace amounts of amniotic fluid. These traces persist despite multiple flushes. A plastic cup sits on the bathroom counter. The contents have congealed. But chemical analysis viewed it to be a mixture of apple juice and methamphysistone.